inspired to share. Share in an answer, in a reminder of our true identity for which is whole, which is complete. Today I went through the web and I stopped over at Amazon and the movie A Course in Miracles Enlightenment, Enlightenment or Bus can be downloaded or streamed through Amazon. There's a DVD version and a streamable version and the streamable version <laughs> has two negative reviews. I got one star out of five. And so when I saw that, there was there was a charge. There was like this contraction of like <gasps> And so it's quite beautiful because like anything that seems to upset us or contract us, its purpose is simply to to recognize where we may have slipped or detail, detoured into the assumption or belief that we are separate and that we're a separate, not only a separate body, but a separate sense of self authoring our experience. And so the reaction or the interpretation to the one star out of five is simply a reaction or an interpretation of an at attack against the separate self concept. So it's, there's an interpretation that the review has something to do with the identity of the filmmaker. And so the filmmaker, in this case, me, thinks he made the film. And the filmmaker not only thinks, because he thinks he made the film, also takes credit for the film. But there's nothing we can take credit for in this in this experience of duality or in this in this world in anything really there's nothing for which the separate self concept can take credit for because there's nothing for which the separate self concept can do So in this experience, my only responsibility is to accept the correction for myself, accept the atonement for myself, which is simply recognizing that the, where the charge is coming from, and it's coming from a misinterpretation of who I am. And so there's a willingness to allow the bad review to be there and also allow for any feelings that seem to come up. There's no resistance to feeling like I'm a bad filmmaker. I'm a bad filmmaker as much as I am a good filmmaker. Both can be allowed. As an actor many years ago, I was always told or re reminded that I couldn't just believe the good reviews. You have to, if you're gonna believe the good reviews, then you have to believe the bad reviews. So now it's, it's, you know, so basically the point being is they're meaningless. One of the early lessons in A Course in Miracles says that I give everything I see the meaning that it has for me. So it's not even like the review, you know, there isn't a resistance to the, what the reviews say, although there, there was when the charge was in my experience. When that came up, there was definitely a resistance to what was showing up because there's a perception of attack. Someone's attacking the filmmaker. I'm the filmmaker. Who else will see these reviews? How will they affect sales of the reviews? So these are all thoughts, all perceptions coming up for disturbing the mind, for an opportunity to disturb the mind, all with the underlying belief that there's actually a self-concept for which is vulnerable and needs to be protected. But the course quote, nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists, herein lies the peace of God, really comes through in the sense that the course makes the fundamental distinction between what's real and what's not real. 
real being truth, which is love, which is experiential and always, and then there's perception, the unreal's perception. And so the charge was based on an interpretation, a perception of myself as a filmmaker, of others out there having judgments against the filmmaker, having judgments or judged against the comments, what's to come of the com comments, the repercussions. That's all unreal. Although it could be experienced as real. Of course, Simonko says the illusion is just as real in its effects as is the truth. So there's no denying that that experience came up. But with the mind training, there's a recognition that the reaction is in, a, in an attempt to preserve the separate self-concept. And the thought system for which its purpose is always to maintain this sense of separateness can continue in its thoughts. In fact, in, the, in, in, in what was showing up was just like, oh, there's a need to defend or there's a need to reach out to the people who left the reviews or that there's something to do. Maybe I should get people to help write good reviews. And, and all of that is now further obscuring what the real problem is. It's, 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 it's trying to fix this, this at the symptom level, fix the, the problem at a symptomatic level. You know, okay, let's, let's, let's get these bad reviews gone. Let's settle this. Let's get good reviews or however. But it, the, the, that's not where the problem is. The problem is in the belief or the conclusion or the assumption that I'm separate and that there's something vulnerable here. But the unreal does not exist and what's real cannot be threatened. So what is real in my experience that cannot be threatened. The answer is in a knowing, it's in, an ex, in the experience of, 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 of what I am. And that hasn't changed despite the comings and the goings of the reviews, or let's just say anything that shows up in the world of form. No matter what shows up, there's an underlying presence that has nothing to do with the body, although it seems like that presence is somewhere in the body, or it seems like that presence is behind the eyes, perhaps in an empty space behind the eyes. But that presence, if we use the timeline for the purpose of recognizing that this presence is always with us, if we look back in time, what I'm speaking of has always been with us, yet has never changed because of time. So what is real has not aged ever. What is real is not lost to me ever. And so therein lies the portal for what is true. So my responsibility is to accept the correction for myself in my mind. So there's something that comes in appearances, shows up in appearances. It creates, it seems to create a charge. It seems like I'm at the effect of that charge. My willingness to allow this presence to take over, to, to allow myself to be wrong about this and allow myself not to resist what's showing up, right? It's like, the bad reviews means I'm a bad filmmaker. Okay, let's be a bad filmmaker. What's true has not been altered. And this is the case with everything. Everything that we're afraid of facing. A relationship breakup, a move a job change, being jobless, being homeless, being without money, being without friends, being without people, all of that faced will demonstrate to us what has not and will not change. There's still something that's very real in 
the knowing and in the experience that will not change. And that is all that's ever needed. And it is always what is okay, and it's always okay. This isn't to say that everybody needs to go break up, be homeless, to discover this truth. This is just to say that regardless of what the circumstances are, even death itself, this reality is unchanged. Our awareness of it, or the scope of our awareness of it, can seemingly be expanded. Hence, that is spiritual awakening. That is the process of a spiritual awakening, or the seeming process of spiritual awakening. That the scope for which we become aware of this reality, this presence, seems to expand. And the mind training seems to be the willingness to give up a thought system that we've, we've, we've become, in some ways, become tired of. We, we, don't, we don't want it anymore. Why else choose a spiritual path other than to free oneself up from suffering? And there's no reason to suffer other than the choice for it. And that's okay too. The, 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 you know, as I was thinking about <laughs> as I was thinking about the reviews, there was a part of me that really wanted to respond. There's a there's a part of me that really wanted to do something about the perceived problem and and that's okay that that choice it's not really a choice but the fact that it shows up as as a choice or appears to be a choice and and we make that choice that's okay too There's, it doesn't doesn't set any it doesn't set what's real back what's real cannot be set back because what's real is and always is and is undisturbed by the seeming appearances of making a choice or not making a choice. Oftentimes we, we suffer in, in making or thinking we're making choices. You know, is the right choice not the right choice? What kind of person am I if I respond this way, even though I know I shouldn't respond this way? There, again, is the issue or the problem of, of separation. Who am I if I make this choice? Hmm. I'm not spiritual anymore if I make the choice to retaliate. Or can I burn through it and not retaliate? And that's the mind training, I suppose. The appearance of mind training. But this is this is about not suffering. And so this is about highlighting the it's just about highlighting the misperception and the thought system for which gives rise to the appearance of separation. And the jig is up. That's it. The jig is up. 